Hey everyone, so we're in my bathroom today, which also happens to double as our laundry room. Uh, recently I've done some updates in here, took down the old shelving, painted the closet, painted the whole bathroom, and now I need to put a new closet up here for laundry supplies, uh, or a closet shelf rather for laundry supplies. So pretty simple overall, but if you're uh, new and a beginner to DIY projects, I think you'll find this helpful. So just to show you some of the stuff you're gonna need here inside, I've got um, my boss stitch brad nailer here, as well as some two inch brad nails, 18 gauge, uh, that I'm gonna use to actually nail up the supports for the shelf and then the shelf itself to the supports. I've got uh, my measuring tape, which I'll need to measure for the cuts. I've got a support bracket here that once I have everything up, that'll go in the middle just to give it some more support in the middle so that it's not just supported by the outsides of it. We've also got uh, some white caulk here to cover in those holes for the brad nails, as well as just the seams where uh, the shelf is going to meet the supports. We're going to need to find where the studs are at. We've got our stud finder, pencil to mark those. And also, I don't like marking up the wall a bunch, so I'll typically just put a piece of frog tape uh, where I think the stud is, then once I measure the stud, I'll mark uh, exactly where that's at so I know where to put those nails. Uh, and then just uh, here are some flathead uh, screws that I'm going to use to mount uh, this mounting bracket to the wall, and then also to uh, the shelf that will be above it. And then lastly, I have out here uh, just my air compressor that I'm going to be using with the brad nailer. Okay, and then out here in the garage, I've also got some more supplies. So the wood I'm gonna be using today, I have just a one by 12 inch by eight foot long piece of prime pine. And then I've got one by three uh, by eight foot long pieces of prime pine as well. These will be used for the supports. This will be used for the shelf. And then to make my cuts, I've got here my miter saw, and then I've got a table saw down there. What I like to do, instead of having it be just this blunt, flat edge, I like to cut about a 45 out of that. That'll go about halfway down here. Just makes it look a little bit nicer of a finish instead of it just being this hard, jagged edge. Um, some other things you're going to need. I've got uh, the paint. If you don't already have primed wood that you're using, you'll need to first prime that. Uh, I typically use kills for that. And then I've got here just a... Uh, white uh, door and trim paint and I use semi-gloss for that uh, here five and one tool to be able to open the paint hammered and nailed back shut and I got here a mini roller just to make that easier uh, rolling that wood and painting it and then just some other painting supplies I'll do a little bit of sanding so I've got a N95 320 grit sand sanding block uh, a couple paint sticks for those and then uh, just here a mini roller tray so let's jump into it and then just a heads up, if there's any materials here that you're interested in, I will put the links to those in the YouTube description below. So the first thing you'll need to do is figure out exactly how high you want that shelf to be. For me, I typically do a little bit below eye level. I'm about six feet tall, uh, just so that you're not looking at the bottom side of the shelf. Uh, and then from there, I would actually want to go through and mark out where all the studs are on the wall particularly for the side pieces. I know there's gonna be a stud in this corner, but then I also wanna make sure I'm making that side support long enough to reach at least the second stud so that it's gonna be nailed into something firm and that I don't have to use any type of construction glue like glue, like liquid nails or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and mark all those out here with my stud finder. And then I've got some pieces of tape here uh, that I'll use to mark that up. So I'll show you a quick example of that just to give me an idea of where it's at. I'm gonna scan down the wall until I hear that beep. So now I know the studs about in this area. I'm just gonna put this piece of tape a little bit below where I plan on mounting the support so that I can still see the tape and where the studs are when I'm gonna use my brad nailer to mount it. Okay, now I got that tape on there. Instead of me marking something on the wall, I'm gonna use that stud finder again to mark the outside and inside part of that stud. Okay, so now instead of having a bunch of marks on my wall, I just got this piece of tape here and I can see whenever I put my support uh, board here, then this is exactly where I'm going to nail those brads into to mount it. So I'll finish doing that for the rest of the wall. I'll speed it up here for you.
Okay, now I've got all those mapped out where the studs are located, so I'll know exactly where to nail in once I do have those boards cut and ready to go. Um, but now I can go ahead and measure the width of that back wall, and then I can measure how far out I want those side supports to go. And remember, I want them to go at least from that corner past this other stud here to make sure they're supported sturdily. Just a little tip as well, whenever I'm making a number of measurements, instead of trying to remember them, potentially forgetting them, making the wrong cut, I'll typically just put a piece of tape here on my leg, and then as I'm making those measurements, I'll write them down. Uh, just makes it uh, much easier to remember them instead of trying to do it in your head. Okay, 76 and a half for that one. Now for these side supports, they have to be a minimum of 12 inches because that's how big my shelf is. So it's gotta be at least 12 inches out from this wall, at least reach that second stud, which is about at 11 inches, 10 and a half, 11 inches it's centered on. And then the rest of it from there is really just personal preference, how far you think you want it to stick out past. Or if you don't want to stick out past, you could cut it short as well. I think it looks a little bit better if it sticks out a little bit past. So I'll probably cut these about to 13 inches and then I'll cut an angle on them, which you'll see a little bit later. Okay, now for measuring the actual shelf that we're gonna cut, we need to measure not only at the back wall, but we also need to measure at about 12 inches out where it's gonna meet uh, the wall out here because typically the walls aren't gonna be perfectly flat. We don't wanna cut it too short where you got a big gap out here. So I did just go ahead and measure that myself and sticking out about 12 inches, it was 77. Back here it was 76 and a half. So if I only cut to 76 and a half, you're gonna see about a quarter inch too short on this side and a quarter inch too short on that side. So I'm gonna cut it to 77 and then I'm gonna to have to cut it at an angle so that it goes down to 76 and a half by the time it gets to the wall. All right, we'll start with cutting those uh, supports on the back wall and then the two that were on the side that was 76 and a half, and then 13 for each of the side ones. So we'll cut those now. Okay, we've got our three cuts there. And then like I mentioned for those side ones, I like to cut a little bit of an angle off the end of them just to make it look a little bit more decorative versus just kind of a blunt end to it. So we'll cut those now. And now just to show you the difference of what that would look like, you'd either have kind of, if you didn't cut it, just this blunt edge kind of sitting on the wall versus cutting it this way. Now you got a little bit of a profile, sand all that down, um, but then that's what sits on the wall. It looks a little bit nicer. Okay, before I actually cut the shelf here, I just want to take these boards, the support boards I just cut up and just kind of fit them in there and make sure they're the right size. Uh, and then we'll move on to cutting the big one. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna fit up one of these, just make sure I like how far it sticks out and it looks good and everything. Okay, pretty happy with those. So now we'll go back down, we'll cut the shelf and then we're gonna need to do some sanding and prep work and then we'll start painting these.
Okay, so just like I cut this little angle on the side supports, I'm gonna do that same type of angle along the whole length of this shelf. And the reason I have to use now the table saw is because it's too long, obviously, for me to do over there with my miter saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut now. So I accidentally missed recording that one, of course, but just to show you here what I was doing, I was cutting that same kind of angle here on the end just to give it a little bit more of a profile along that. So I'll need to clean this up, uh, sand it all down. And then uh, we do need to make one more cut because the front of this was 77. If you remember, the back was only 76 and a half. So we need to cut a little bit of an angle from 76 and a half to 77 over here. And I'll go ahead and do that uh, with the table saw as well. Okay, so I wanna take that off evenly on both sides. So I'm just gonna measure from the back side a quarter inch in, which you can see I've already made the mark there. And then I'm gonna draw a line from that quarter inch in to this front point that's supposed to be 77 from length to length. And then I'm gonna to need to cut that out. So I did change my mind here. Instead of using the table saw, I'm just gonna use my miter saw. I'm gonna to have to make two cuts. I'll have to cut one side, the blade's not long enough, probably get me to about here, and then I'll cut the rest uh, by flipping it over. But trying to do it on the table saw without an se extra set of hands can be pretty hard to maneuver this long of a board, uh, especially on my small portable table saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with the miter saw here. Since I'm cutting this on an angle, it's a little bit more difficult to make it stay where it needs to be. So I did just grab a C-clamp here and once I feel like I got this line here, a little hard to see on the video, but once I have that line lined up perfectly uh, perpendicular to the saw blade, uh, then I'm gonna clamp this down as well, just to hold it in place. Okay, now I wanna run this piece upstairs, just make sure it fits good before I do any finish work, uh, just in case I have to make any more final cuts. Okay, so luckily that fits in there. It's pretty snug, which is what I want. Uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect if you're doing this at your house. Definitely won't be perfect here either, but whenever you're done, you're just gonna put caulk where this meets the wall up here. You'll put caulk along the back and then caulk where the bottom meets the other side of the wall. So it'll cover any imperfections. If you're within about an eighth of an inch to a little under a quarter of an inch on each side, the caulk is gonna cover those imperfections anyways. Okay, I'm just gonna go around these now, just with a pretty fine uh, sandpaper block here, just get all the exposed parts. So I'm not worried about this side over here because that's gonna be against the wall. 
Not worried about this side of these small blocks because these are gonna be hidden as well. You just wanna make sure you're getting all the exposed parts. You don't want something rough like that. It's not gonna look very nice. So we're gonna sand all these down. Just to protect yourself, I would recommend wearing an N95 uh, mask. Just don't wanna be breathing in all those fine dust particles. All right, now before we start to paint those, we do want to wipe them down really good. They're obviously got a lot of dust on them now. You can kind of see it. Um, so here I just have a couple of fiber cloths. You want to get something that's not going to leave lint or dust or uh, little fuzzes or anything over the wood whenever you go to paint it. So uh, fiber cloths, terry cloths, these are a good thing to do. So, so I'm going to get one of these damp. I'm going to wipe these uh, all down, get all the dust off, and I'm going to take a dry one and then just wipe it again one more time. All right, like I said before, for these spots where it's just exposed wood, there's no primer, you really should put some primer on there or else the paint might not grab good, might just kind of bleed through uh, this wood coloring and really not adhere the way you want it to. So I'm just gonna put some of this kills, I'll just brush it on uh, the edge pieces here and then on these uh, sidewall supports as well, I'll put some where I had that exposed uh, wood when I made those cuts. And then after that, we'll let it dry, and then we'll go on to painting it uh, with the uh, door and trim paint. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let that dry now. According to the can, it says paint in one hour, so we'll come back in an hour and start applying that paint. All right, now that that primer's all dried, we're gonna go ahead and put on this uh, door and trim paint. It's a semi-gloss white, uh, so I'm gonna mix this up and then we'll start rolling. All right, we got one coat of that on there. I'm gonna wait to see it and that dries if we need another one. I probably will just to be safe. Uh, it's not really that much effort, maybe another 10 minutes or so. Uh, so I'm gonna give it about an hour, come back uh, and likely just paint another coat and then we'll go on to actually mounting it in the closet. All right, there are a few spots where I can still see some stains underneath. So I am gonna do one more coat on this. All right, that wraps up all the painting. So we're just gonna wait another hour or so, let that dry to the touch, and then we'll go up and put it in the closet. All right, that's all dried up now. We're gonna go ahead and mount this. The things we're gonna need right now, just to reiterate, 
I'm gonna use this Brad nailer. I've got my air compressor out in the hallway. It's connected or going to be connected to. And then I'm using these two inch Brad nails. The reason I decided on two inch is because this board right here, which is one inch thick or nominally, it's actually uh, at the actual measurements, uh, three quarter of an inch and then it's a half inch of drywall. And then um, I'm gonna need another three quarter inch that's actually gonna anchor into the stud behind the wall. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this mounted. And also, in addition to that, one more thing you're gonna want, if you don't wanna just eyeball it, get a level up there and make sure it's nice and level. Okay, and then I still have my pieces of tape from earlier and tell me exactly where the studs are at and that's where I'm gonna put in these brads. Okay, now I'm just gonna quickly put on those side support pieces. Again, make sure you're watching. give you a little bit better look of that here so you can see we got all the brad holes now those are going to need to be filled with that caulk later on so we'll wait till the end for that now we can go ahead and put that shelving board on top of here Okay, and I'm actually gonna go grab a quick step ladder so I can get up there to nail the shelf down into the support. All right, now I'm just gonna go around the perimeter with my brad nailer and I'm gonna be making sure to push the shelf down before I hit it in each spot just to make sure it's sitting nice and flush on top of those supports. It's all snug up there just to show you it's very sturdy it's not coming off of there so now i just have to do the finishing touches which is to put the caulk all along the seams here i'll do it um, along the, the edges up top just in case anyone's tall and can see up there and then i'll fill in all these uh, holes where i just put in those nails All right, that pretty much wraps it up. The one thing I actually did not end up doing just yet was putting on this extra bracket here in the middle. I may still end up doing that. What I would do for that is just to add one more support uh, piece of wood here so that this is all level between this board and that board. And then the mount would just sit uh, like that in the middle. I don't know yet if I need it this way pretty sturdy without it. And if I don't need it, I'm not going to bother with it. But thank you again for watching. If you got value from this video, I appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified whenever I have future DIY videos, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you again. We'll see you here on the next one.